Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about how to write the discussion and conclusion sections of your paper. So let's get started. First up, how do you discuss the results of your evaluation? Well, to start, the purpose of the discussion section is to describe and interpret your evaluation results in relation to your instructional design. If you take a look at the project outline, you'll see that you're responsible for addressing three questions in your discussion section. First, how usable was your instruction according to your results? Two, how effective was your instruction for learning? And three, what were participants' attitudes toward your instruction? For each of these questions, you'll want to think about what worked well and what didn't. And most importantly, you'll want to explain why you as the designer ended up with these results while connecting these explanations to your specific instructional design decisions. Now, for each main result, you should one, describe the result, this was my finding, and two, interpret why you think you got that result. Generally speaking, there are two types of explanations to the why question. The first category of explanation is design explanations. These are explanations related to the design of your instruction. For example, these might be explanations related to the assumptions you made about your participants, decisions you made about your instructional content, perhaps the way you chunked and sequenced that content, the instructional strategies and methods you employed, or the media and technology you used to design and deliver your instruction. Those are all examples of possible design explanations. The second category of explanation is evaluation explanations. These types of explanations don't focus on your instructional design decisions, but instead focus on how your project's evaluation went. Such explanations may focus on the participants who completed the evaluation, or your evaluation procedure, or the instruments used, such as the tests, surveys, and activities, or maybe there were even technical problems that impacted your data collection. These are all examples of explanations that are not focused on your instructional design, but instead on how you evaluated that design. And we all know that evaluation is complicated, and the way we conduct an evaluation can and does impact the data we collect. So keep this alternative explanation in mind as you interpret your results. So now that we have a little bit of background about writing a discussion section, let's take a look at a few examples and tips from past students. One strategy is to start your discussion by restating the purpose of your project. Here's an example of how you might go about doing that. Highlighted in yellow, we read, integrating games in classroom instruction, was designed to aid teachers in learning how to incorporate games in their lessons to address student disengagement and lack of motivation issues in the classroom. That's a nice clear statement about the overall goal of the project. Now, that sentence is followed by a, a clear instructional goal highlighted in orange. The goal of the course was to increase teacher confidence by learning about the different types of games, game design, and when and how to use games in the classroom. And then, after a little bit more explanation, the opening paragraph concludes, to achieve this goal, the learning module's usefulness and effectiveness were evaluated. This is an excellent setup by the author. It reminds the readers about the goal of the project and sets them up to be ready for a discussion of the evaluation results. Now, a second tip is to acknowledge and discuss important issues. Here's an example from Shelby's project on conflict resolution. This paragraph starts off by stating, one issue of confusion that all usability study participants encountered was the navigation. This is a nice direct admission that navigation was a problem. And the author goes on to talk about the severity of that issue. All participants commented that they had difficulties completing tasks because they had to keep going back to the home page and then clicking each page until they were able to get to the desired module. This is contrasted with the original intention of the design in the next sentence. 
The original intent was for the online module to be presented in a logical order so users couldn't skip around to a specified section. However, participants expressed frustration while clicking through each page and felt that the process took too long. This paragraph concludes by talking about a specific revision that was made to address this issue. Before the author launched the learning assessment, images in the overview of modules section on the home page were made clickable in case participants wanted to see a specific page. In sum, this is a nice example of acknowledging and discussing important issues, in this case, a usability issue. Another tip is to describe and interpret important results. Here's an example from another project. The author starts this paragraph by stating, in looking at the multiple choice assessment data, some data points should be highlighted. One point of discussion is the relatively high average score of 4.50 in the pretest. Okay, this is a good example of calling attention to a specific data point so that it can be further discussed. Once the author draws attention to that point, the author follows up with some possible explanations. Before starting the module, participants indicated they were familiar with email etiquette, which may have contributed to the high pretest scores. One must also consider that one of the reasons the participants voluntarily took part in the project may be their interest in learning more about email etiquette. So in those two sentences highlighted orange, we see two possible explanations as to why there was a high average pretest score. In the final sentence of the paragraph, the author takes it one step further. Thus, the module may not be the participant's first exposure to an email etiquette resource. It is likely these participants entered the module with some prior knowledge of email etiquette, which was in contrast to what was expected of the target audience. Here the author provides a bit more interpretation. He's stepping back and making a connection that there was a discrepancy between his project's target audience and the actual people who participated in his evaluation. This is a nice example of describing and interpreting an important result. The last tip is to end with a strong closing paragraph. After you discuss all of your results, you should tie a bow on things with a well-written paragraph designed to end the discussion section. Let's take a look at an example. Although some topics were more challenging than others, participants gained new knowledge and expressed how certain modules or sections stood out to them. Notice how the author is zooming out here and talking about the overall results of the evaluation, as opposed to focusing on any one single result. Then, a little bit later, we read, the author believes the module was successful in teaching conflict resolution skills, because knowledge was gained and some participants were able to connect these methods and scenarios with their own past experiences. Okay, good to know. On the whole, the author feels the module was successful. She then goes on to end the paragraph by writing, overall, participants were stimulated and motivated by the relevancy of the examples given throughout the online module. Participants were able to make personal connections to some of the topics and scenario-based video examples, which can be associated with both Keller's Arcs V model and Mayer's Cognitive Theory of Multimedia Learning, as well as the instructional strategies used. Again, a nice strong conclusion to the discussion section, basically telling the reader what the takeaway of it all is. This example does a nice job of connecting these high-level takeaways to various decisions made involving the frameworks and theories that guided the instructions design. Now, let's talk a little bit about writing the conclusion section of your paper. In general, the conclusion section is going to be relatively short, about a page, give or take. So essentially, what you need to do with your conclusion is briefly touch upon three topics. First, you need to revisit the instructional goal, then you need to contemplate possible next steps, and finally, you need to reflect on the instructional design process overall. So let's talk about each of these pieces of a good conclusion. So, revisiting the instructional goal. 
In this case, what you want to do is restate for the reader one last time what was the project's goal. Now, be sure to reconnect that goal to the original education problem that kicked off the whole instructional design journey. From there, you want to think a little bit about what extent your instruction met that goal and whether or not it closed the gap between the current and desired states. Then, of course, remind the reader how you came to this conclusion by recapping the main points of your discussion. All of this should be concise and real brief. Now, in terms of contemplating next steps, in this part of your conclusion, you'll want to think about what you would do next if you had more time, more money, and more resources. What changes would you make to improve your instruction? And why would you make those changes? Keep it high level here, no need for a lot of detail. Just summarize what changes you would make and why you think those would be priority. Finally, for the closing paragraph, you should reflect on the overall instructional design process. As someone who has gone through all of the steps of ADDI, what have you learned about the instructional design process? And secondly, what are your personal takeaways about the value of instructional design as a whole? Again, no need to go into a lot of detail here. What we're looking for is for you to zoom out and think about, huh, I've gone through this whole process. What have I learned and what value does this process bring to the table? So there you have it, folks. A few tips and tricks for writing the discussion and conclusion sections of your final paper. Thanks for watching.